Okay. So we have here five questions, and I would like to to go over these uh, questions. Uh, some of them, when I do them by hand, I will do in the simplified version, but I will also do them on on uh, uh, JAPE. In JAPE, so you can see how that is done. So the first question is really an exercise in the implication introduction. So here is a question. Uh, what we have here is a principal connective. Uh, so really the statement is of the form something implies something else. I mean A implies some other proposition. So the first step is simply to draw a box on top and then uh, we pull A to the top and uh, and uh, B uh, on the other proposition here to the bottom. So really to prove this implication reduces to show how we from assumption A can uh, derive this proposition here. Now again this is an implication so by the implication introduction rule we get this Sorry, I'm going big back and forth in in the, in the proof, so uh, uh, it jumped a bit too far. But you can see here we have uh, this implication becomes we get a box here, and now we have an implication C implies A. So that we, we again, how do we do? How do we justify that line? Well, we draw a box on top and put the C up here and the A here. And now the proof can actually be justified. Each uh, line can be justified. Um, so let me do that in um, um, now I will do the, the, the thing in, uh, in JAPE. So the one I do in JAPE will be a bit more, a bit uh, uh, more complicated formula, but it's the same principle, and, and you should then do the full, full question, both by hand and by JAPE, I would say. But um, the way it works is that uh, it's an implication uh, introduction we obviously have to do. So implication introduction and again we have a the principal connective is an implication so it's an implication introduction for the next one we're doing going backwards as you can see and one more implication introduction and lo and behold we have the full proof here so the point really is that uh, that every single step is, is more or less automatic when you have uh, for this question there wasn't any place where we had to do for example, implication uh, elimination, which is a bit more tricky. So now let's look at question two, the second one. But uh, I will do it uh, in a simpler version. So I'll do uh, one where we only have four four negations in front of the A instead of six. But you are highly recommended to do the one with six, both in JAPE and by hand. So. Um, So this is really an exercise in repeated use of not introduction and not elimination. So the principal connective is an implication, so we start drawing a box. So that's certainly straightforward, and we put the A in top. And what we have to justify or have to prove is not uh, is uh, the, the not 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 uh, sorry four nots with an A. So th that was a implication introduction we did there. Now. In order to justify something with a not in front, uh, what the only way we can really justify it is by drawing a box and then pulling the thing up. Let me start with assuming the thing without the not and then deriving a contradiction. That's what we do now. So we take the thing without the not. So now instead of four knots, we only have three knots. And we want to derive a contradiction from that. Okay, so how do we get to that contradiction? Uh, well, well, first of all, let me, let me just write down this was a, a not introduction. And of course, what we have here in the, uh, on the 
So we have to get to that, justify that contradiction here. So how do we get a contradiction, a direct contradiction? Well, if you could prove, let's say, not not a, that would be good, because that would con contradict uh, the assumption with between nots in front. So that would into so this would be a direct contradiction if you could derive not not a. So the way we could justify. Um, So the so the not uh, the, the contradiction is, is justified by a not elimination. Now the not not a again we follow the standard. It's we had to to justify a not or argue for a not. So that we do that by pulling up, the, assuming the things without the not in this case not a, and then we, we want to to derive a contradiction. And as it happened, we actually have a contradiction because line the, the a in the top and the a in line three. Are directly in contradiction to each other. So the handwriting is a bit poor here, and this is a software I'm using. Very difficult to write in a good handwriting. But uh, this was a not elimination, and the rest are assumptions. Now let me do uh, the actual question in JAPE. So now instead of four, four knots, four negations, I put actually all six, so we can so I'll do the full question. JAPE. So this is a question. So the first step should be obvious because it's an implication. We have to use a uh, implication introduction rule. The next step is also automatic because it starts with a not. So whenever we have to argue for a negation of something, then the natural thing to do is to to draw a box on top and then uh, use a implication introduction. Sorry, use a not introduction. Not introduction. So now the ape works out that we, we it pulls everything up to as an assumption without the not, and then we have to derive a contradiction. So how do we get a contradiction? And that's uh, uh, by not elimination, by contradiction. So if we could prove a with four knots in front. That's what the ape work out here, then it will be home and dry. The question is how do we argue for or justify line three, what is now line three? Well, because it begins with a not, we draw a box on top and simply use a normal uh, not introduction. Like here. So now we can see the three dots show that so this is what is we have to argue. We have to, to somehow justify that contradiction. Uh, how do we do that? Well, if we could if we could prove a not not, if we had an an a, 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 a not not a, we would be in good shape because then we would have a direct contradiction from line three and line four, that would give us line five. What about line four? Not not a. Well, the automatic thing is to draw a box on top and assume not a and derive a contradiction. So let's do that. So we do. We highlight not not a. Highlight not not a and do a negation introduction. So J works out. It's like drawing a box on top, assuming the thing without the a. In this case, not a. And now actually we can justify the whole proof. The proof is finished because we need to justify the contradiction in line five. But look at line uh, one and line four; they are in direct contradiction to each other. Look, now the question is only how to do it in JAPE. That sometimes we have to try and error a bit. Let's see; that should be okay. Let's see. I think JAPE can work that one out. If I, if I do a uh, not elimination, no, it couldn't. 
Maybe that one, Jape, can work out. Yeah, that one. Sometimes you help to Jape, to help Jape a bit. So it's, but I hope you can you can see this proof is correct. And uh, so this was the answer to question two. And you should be able to do that both by by J, but also to do it by hands and annotate it. And your annotation should really be a, a more or less exact match of what you see J is doing. So that you have to get to the level where you can do that question uh, by hands as exact as as, as J is doing. But when you get into it, I hope you will see that it's pretty. Some of these things are quite straightforward. Now let's uh, do question three. I will do a simpler version of it because I have no space here by hand, but then I will do the, a more complicated version uh, in JAPE afterwards. And then I will leave it as an exercise for you to do the full question. So let me do a simpler version. Let me see. So let's... Uh, boom, boom. Yeah, A implies B. And let's, let's, let's already here have... A and B. So this is a somewhat simpler version of, of, of question three. Uh, when you do it in uh, by hand, it will be more complicated, but it's essentially the same type of, of construction. So the first step is straightforward. We draw a box, assume A, and our target is to, to prove B implies A and B. And the next step is again obvious, draw a box, put B in the top, A and B in the bottom. And now you can see we, we actually have finished the proof because from the first line we have A, from the second line we have B, and uh, that gives us A and B. Here A and B. Um, Now, if you do it, uh, the full question is, of course, more complicated, question three, because, but essentially, you're first doing a lot of automatic boxes, a lot of implication introductions, and then in the end, you're doing um, some uh, end deviations. So here is one that is still uh, simpler than uh, the exercise, but a bit more complicated than the one I did by hand. But it's the same principles. So um, let's see how do we do that. Uh, the principle connected with an implication, so clearly we have to use a implication introduction. So we'll highlight it. Okay, so we got a implication. Uh, so so we have an, another implication introduction. Obviously, I'm doing and I continue. So far, so good. But now we have to justify line four that we have these ends. But look at the first three lines. So so by line one and two, we can justify a and b. We can get a and b. Now we are in J. So so. It's a bit the way it works in JP is that if you highlight line four and go backwards and do an implication introduction, then J works out. I think should we do no we should go uh, let me see. Yeah. Let's do an end application. I'm not a bit sure. Sometimes I'm a bit in doubt whether Jabe can work out what to do because. Uh, but let's do an end introduction. Yes, Jabe did it correctly. It. it uh, so now we we have to justify A and B. But look at line one and two. That clearly can be justified. So if you do a end introduction, Jabe should work it out. So this is a complete proof, and again, you should be able to do this kind of proof also on the piece of paper uh, with the correct annotation. And uh, again, it looks more complicated than it is actually. That's a key thing. I mean, that it's it's uh, these questions I'm writing here. They look quite 
complicated, but uh, but they are actually straightforward when you get into it. Now let me look at the the fourth question. But this time I will, well I will also do a simpler version here because I don't have space to do the full one. So I will do a simpler version here, and then I will. Is, is, you highly recommended to try to do the full version by hand and by jape. I will do the full version by jape after after this. So the first step is straightforward. We drew a, a box, and on top we have the A or B or C, and we want to derive C or B or A. Now, in order to use this information on the top, um, we, the only way to, ex to to use such an OR we have here up here is to use an OR elimination. So we have to split into two cases. We know A is possible, or is a situation, but OR possible B or C. So we split into two cases. I will do it uh, because I have a little space here. I will do it in uh, uh, in parallel, so it's not like Jape do it. But you are welcome to do that by hand also if you if you do it. But it's a bit more tricky to annotate. Uh, but let's do it this way. So I do it in parallel. We have uh, one box. We assume A, and then our target is is uh, what we are aiming to prove, namely C or B or A. In the other box, we assume the other uh, possibility, namely B or C. And again, our target is C or B or A. I apologize for the handwriting, but that's the software I'm using is uh, seem to have some trouble. Now let's try to fill in the box. We know A by assumption, and we have to somehow derive. Clearly, you can see that. The conclusion inside that box should follow from A. So if you could derive, for example, B or A here in the middle, then we are, that should follow. That follows from A, and then we we have the can derive the uh, conclusion. Okay. Now in the other box, we have an OR, so we have to derive something from the OR. So again, we are forced to consider two cases, namely one case where B is the case, and the other box where C is the case. Again, I'm going to do it in a parallel. And uh, what we are aiming at is to prove the conclusion. Now that we don't really, I don't have space to do it in here, so I will, I will uh, now, I will jump to the. Uh, to the JAPE way of doing it, and then I will actually in JAPE I will do the full version. But you highly recommend to do this version here, but do it by uh, hand and uh, and also by JAPE. But uh, try to do it in the serial representation rather than uh, the parallel one I'm using here. Uh, and then you also annotate your proof. Okay, here we have the general question. So now we now again we have an OR we have to use. So there are two cases. In one case A is true, and the other case uh, the, the remaining formula uh, is true. This thing here is true. So there are two cases we consider. So we have to highlight the formula and then do a an or elimination, forward or elimination. You see, we have two cases now. Jape work out the two cases. One case A is a case, and the other case is uh, the remaining part of the or. So our general target is to prove what we have here in line six. Uh, so how do we justify line three from line two? Well. We can go backwards and do an or uh, introduction, keeping the right. And 
we can do the same again. And the same. So that worked out all right. Now we are in a new box, but in, again, we in line six, well, in line six, you can see we have an or. So we have how, somehow to to use an or elimination. There are two cases, namely one case where B is, is holds at line seven now, and the other line where C or D is a case. And again, in the bottom of the box, you can see the target. So we go backwards, we do a or intro, preserving right, preserving right, and preserving left. And what about this box? We have to, again, we have C or D, that is an or, so we have to use or elimination. That's the only way we can extract that information, line 11, that is to split into two cases. One case with C holes and one case with D holes. Here. And what do we get here? It should come in one line actually. We just go back to a, an O introduction, preserving the lift. And now the proof is complete. You see we have 20 lines here. Proof is complete. It looks very horribly complicated when you're finished. And actually, maybe also in the beginning, it's, it's quite confusing all these steps we go through. But the, the key thing really is that I want to get to the level where you, you find it quite straightforward and easy. Uh, that's the next step. That is to, to, I mean, the important step is to simply get to the level where these kind of things are fairly straightforward and easy. Uh, then later we will talk about how to solve more tricky questions. But let's see the one in line five. The, the fifth question. So this is a very interesting one. Let me also do a, a sim much simpler version of that than the one here. And then I will do the other one in J. I will do the full question. Uh, so let's see. Let's just look at C or D. Implies not not D or C. How do we prove that? Well, the first stuff is easy, it's straightforward. We, we draw a box on top because we have an implication. Uh, of course, in the, in the more general one, is it more complicated, but let's see. So we draw a box. We assume C or D. And our target is not not D or C. Uh, now let's see here. Actually, two things we could do naturally. We can either go from the top and use the or elimination rule, but we can also think about it that we have a not negation in the bottom. And since we have a negation, um, the natural thing to do is to draw a box on top of that to justify the negation. We draw a box. And then we put the thing up as an assumption without the not, and put the contradiction there. By the way, I recommend you also give it a try where you try to do it the other way around, where you start with to do the or elimination if you want from line one. Then you will get a, a, a slightly different proof. So the key thing here is how do we get, justify the contradiction? Well. If we had D or C, then we would have a contradiction by com comparing line two and line three, what is now line two and line three. So that would be a direct contradiction. The question is, how can we now justify D or C? Well, uh, we have to use the first line on the top C or D. That's an OR. So the, really the only thing we can do is to do an OR elimination. That means we split into two cases, one case where we assume C and one case where we assume D. So this is a formula, this is an OR. We take one case, I do it again in parallel, one where we assume C and the other box where we assume D. Actually, the target, of course, is D 
or C, because that's what we want to, to argue. And in the other box, we assume the other case, namely D. And again, our target is the same as, as what we are trying to, to justify, namely D or C. And now the proof is actually complete. So uh, I will do it uh, now in uh, do the full question now, but I will do it in uh, in 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 JAPE. So here we have the full question. Uh, so the first thing is to we do an implication introduction and we do another implication introduction another implication introduction that goes automatic of course when you do it on a piece of paper you have to make sure you have quite a lot of space on top of the formula the proof is going to be quite long now how do we justify this knot here well because it starts with a knot the natural thing to do is to do a knot introduction draw a box on top simply put up the thing without the knot and, and try to get a contradiction so now we have to justify the contradiction that we get by not elimination or not contradiction rule here you see it's very similar to what I did by hand now how do we get to that well look at line 1 uh, we, we, it would be nice if we could somehow uh, eliminate Get get C or D. We should be able to deduce that because you can see in the proof in line two and three we have A and B. So let's highlight this one. So let's highlight that one. We do an implication elimination. Yes, and that now more or less everything is worked out. Uh, for example. A implies B, the natural thing to do is to do an implication introduction. I don't know why it didn't accept that sometimes when you do JAPE. You, maybe we can help JAPE a bit by highlighting one of these. No. Okay, now it worked. So you can see that if you check the proof, I mean, of course, I'm doing it much faster here than I will expect you to be able to work out all the details, but you can use the pause button. But what is remains now is to get from line 8 to line 9. And you can see we have an OR, C or D. In order to argue from an OR, we have to split to two cases, if you remember. One case where we assume C, one case where we assume D. Now, if you use it in uh, JAPE, we highlight the formula 8. And then we go do an OR elimination. Then JAP automatically will split it into the two cases. Oops, where do we go? Yeah. Yes, it splits into two cases. One where we assume C and one where we assume D. And our target is in both cases what we're aiming at, that is to prove D or C. And that should be the complete proof now. Let's see. Yes, that's a complete proof you have. And you can see again, it, it looks quite complicated. But I mean, the key thing is both whether you do it by hand or, or also by JAPE, um, that there is a certain logic by which the proof evolve. If you just look at the final results, this box here is almost impossible to work out what how we, we arrived at the proof. So you are really expected to derive these kind of proofs, I mean, by hand in the exam, they will be typically, if you look at past papers, there will simply be that kind of questions. And these questions here, are, are uh, even though they look quite complicated, you should be able to both derive them and write down the annotation also. Uh, 